Anyway, he gave me a project for like two weeks and said, let me see what you can do with this. And I rose to the challenge, right? They had had this case for about three, four years and something mm -hmm. very simple, literally very simple as, as mapping the money through the corporations, no one had done. And the information was right there. And when I found it and mapped it, and, and that goes back to my science, right? Yeah, Thank sure. the Lord with my cousins. <laughs> I went very <laughs> basic and I was able to impress him. So he gave me all his major accounts, literally. So I had the, the great fortune of representing Don King in boxing. And so wow. I um, represented him on the litigation side in, in, in boxing. And, and that was that was great. I represented him against um, a boxer out of out of Miami. And so I, I literally can go. Yeah, I can check mark that success. Um, you know, so I really cool. want to thank that attorney, of course. Mr. Willie Gary, who gave me that opportunity um, to to be his, his his right hand during the time that I worked for him, it was it was really a great opportunity. That's good. Okay. Well, let's talk about the uh, big money, and of course, boxing is a big money sport uh, involved in modern day sports. Some people are of the opinion that big money is ruining sports. Other people believe that big money helps maintain high quality sports. What is your opinion? Listen. Here's here's the deal. We are a capitalist society. Yeah. And, and I'm going to choose my words very carefully because, yes, this is, you know, going to be sure. permanent and, and be on the Internet forever and ever. <laughs> but you're always going to have different opinion when it comes to the economics of sports. That's just a fact, right? Mm -hmm. We currently sure. have... Um, women athletes, specifically in, in soccer, as you're aware, um, you know, that sued the United States Soccer Federation, right, for equal mm -hmm. pay. Sure. Um, so that is going on currently as, as we speak. Mediations broke down, I believe, last week. So, oh. and, and, and there are two sides to that. You have those who believe the men in general have more attendance at their games, and so therefore they're entitled to get more money, you know, throughout the... Mm -hmm. Throughout okay. the years, when they're not playing, playing in these international tournaments, and then there's the other side that says, "Wait, but the women outperform." You know, each time they do play play in international tournaments, um, they really prevail or they really take us to to the top of the leaderboard. So people are going to measure how money should flow in any business, but something where something such as sports, where it involves society at large, right? It involves okay. just folks, you know, paying into it, right? Joe Blow sure. and his family want to go to this game. They're always going to have their opinion. I I, I don't I don't want to go on one side or the other. I, I just think it just depends on the objective. But at the end of the day, the athletes wants to be paid. And at the end of the day, you need sponsors to pay the athletes. So well, yeah. what are we going to do? Well, yeah, the sponsors get the money from advertising and then the people, of course, pay... Pay uh, pay all of that too by attending the games. But uh, what uh, do do female athletes and male athletes bring in uh, the same? Well, that's just uh, uh, bring in the same amount of people. Uh, I guess that depends on the sport and the type of, of person in the sport too. I mean, you see some uh, you see some female tennis players that will bring in a lot more money than certain male players. But then you see the reverse as well. So I'm not sure what to say on that. Um, Alicia Fid, you have been an adjunct uh, professor of law as well at both Barry University and the University of Phoenix. What do you prefer most, teaching or lawyering, or do you like to do both? Actually, actually, I just, I love to share information. So even when you go on my Twitter page, it says educate and inform and inspire. And that's, that side of me motivates me more. That's what I like more. I like to share information and share knowledge. So um, when I'm practicing law, I try my best. If my clients are up to it, I'll actually tell them step by step what's happening, why we're doing it, how we're doing it, get them involved as much as possible. If they're not so inclined and they just want the result, then I, of course I acquiesce to to the, the style and the personality of the clients. So when it comes to teaching, it was fun. Oh my God. Um, so University of Phoenix, I taught for a very long time. And there were, there were other um, schools that I taught for that I, I didn't put in, in my bio. And that's because I have a master's in environmental studies. So I've actually taught 
just environmental science and environmental studies as well in, in the past. Um, but this is what I liked about it. I literally am just so energized when I walk into a classroom and I'm seeing adults that really want to change their lives by getting, you know, this, you know, whether it's a first degree or second degree, because they're already making money, right? Especially for sure. universities. Phoenix. They're already working. A lot of them were probably making way more than I was, you know, <laughs> at the time, but they just needed um, this piece of paper because whatever level that they needed to go to, it was a check mark. And and so with that being said, um, it's it's a lot of fun to teach. There's an entertainment side to me too, Richard, which is why I wrote the book. Um, I, I think I, I'll send you this auto's intro. Um, I actually okay. did spoken word in the past as well. And when I did spoken word, always practicing law and doing all these different things on the side. Um, when I did spoken word, I was the first, I guess, spoken word artist to open up for legendary R&B singers after Seven and Howard Hewitt. So oh. even with that, yes, right there, right there in Tampa. So, so yeah, I, I, I certainly like the entertainment and the teaching side of my life. Okay. Well, listen, uh, we only have uh, about five minutes left, unfortunately, maybe four, but I'm going to go to, uh, I want to ask you about one of your tweets. You quote Louis Pasteur, who said, chance favors the prepared mind. Would you mind developing this? Uh, also, another quote, if the mountain was smooth, you couldn't climb it. Appreciate it all. Pre appreciate it all. I like this quote. Your thoughts. Yeah, so the, let's start with the, the latter. So the mountain was 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 smooth. You couldn't climb it. That was that came from my my uncle and my uncle Teddy. He called me earlier this year when he found out that I became the first female general counsel of of the soccer franchise. And and he was just saying, my niece, I know how hard you work to get everything that you have, you know, and you you're certainly not afraid of, you know, taking chances. Okay. And, and he was just encouraging me. And he said, Alicia, you have so much more to do in your life. And you certainly could not get to the top of the mountain if um, everything went smoothly. Because if a mountain is smooth, you can't climb it. You need ridges to put your, <laughs> put your feet in to climb it. And that's literally what he was saying. So he was saying, listen, all the obstacles that you met along the way, that is what helped you to climb to get to the top. And you certainly have other mountaintops to get to. So that's what that was about. So I took it in and said, wow, when you look back, you have to appreciate it all. And being Christian, of course, you have to understand that God does not make, make mistakes. So therefore, when you're, when you're encountering something that's not comfortable to you, when you're encountering something that you view as an obstacle, just remember, God oftentimes, he's behind it all. And he's going to take you through because he doesn't make mistakes. He's just building <laughs> you to the next level. And chance favors a prepared mind. Well, pasteurization. Well, I'm a scientist, so I, I lean on that. And um, I literally believe that you should constantly, constantly be educating yourself, trying to make yourself a better human being, you know, intellectually, spiritually, sure. socially, just try to keep the self-development. It's very important. And if you continue to do that, God would just put you in places and things will just be thrown at you to, to, to take you to that level of success that you subjectively believe you need to be. In. And, and, and that's what I mean by chance favors a prepared mind. Okay, well, uh, let, we can go right there. I have a bit more time than I thought. In another retweet, you mentioned Martin Luther King. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Your thoughts on that? Absolutely. I, I think um, we are living in a society where people focus so much on all that is wrong. And, and when things are coming at us, we, we just want to hit back, fight fire with fire. And I'm not saying that's not good at sometimes, Richard. Mm -hmm. Sometimes sure. you do have to fight fire with fire. But I think you should more defer to um, the softer side. I think you should more defer to, um, you know, meet, meeting th that challenge with, um, you know, with love and, and understanding. And, and yes, I'm a litigator, so of course, my, my default, my knee-jerk reaction will be, of course, fight fire with fire. But sure. the Alicia, on the personal side, um, I, I certainly do believe that 
you know, there, there has to be some good in, in that human being. Doesn't matter how poorly they're treating me or how poorly I see them treating another human being, right? right. I believe that um, there, there has to be some good. And how do you tap into that? And, and you only tap into that with, with love. So, so in other words, your, uh, I guess your, uh, uh, the way you work things is you have to look at the Old Testament, uh, you know, fight uh, an eye for an eye, but also you have to remember to turn the other cheek. I guess that's how we could sum that up. Well, I don't know about turning the other cheek. <laughs> I'm, I don't know. I think I leave that up to Jesus. But what I am saying is that you may not need to go as hard as you want to go. There might be another alternative because my, my father always says, you know, Alicia, life is not easy, but it doesn't matter what's going on. There's always an alternative. And so I always think that um, there, there's always a better, a, a better way to approach it. All right, Alicia and Finn, I'm sorry. Uh, we're at the end of our uh, time now. So I'd like to uh, uh, thank Alicia Fid for being on our program today. And remember, this is Curmudgeonly Yours with host Richard Vaughn on Society Bites Radio. You can also hear Curmudgeonly Yours on Spotify, Sound Echo, iHeart Radio, iTunes, and many other platforms, including our very own SocietyBitesRadio.com. And click on cu Cultural Presenters, Global Culture, and Curmudgeonly Yours or richardbot.com, click on podcast. Thank you very much for being on the show today, Alicia Fid. All right, thank you so much, guys, for having me. Take care. So I'd like to thank our guests for being on Curmudgeonly Yours today. And please, if you like what you heard, send me an email to richard at richardbont.com. And if you didn't, please keep your comments to yourself. Remember, this is Richard Bont and Curmudgeonly Yours on Society Bites Radio, where everything is what it seems, nothing is what it seems, and what is not said is often of most interest.